Okay. Hi, everyone. This is uh, about doing a space galaxy, which I've already started here. And I've been painting a lot of smaller paintings to do things with, like this one here. This is a sunset with the galaxy showing, little uh, trees at the bottom. So the lesson will be in how to do like the galaxy and simple background. It's really simple, create text paints. This is the orange. You can see some of the reference photo here for that one, all right? So create text illustration colors that are transparent. And when I wanna mix up colors, of course the white's opaque. So I have some white set aside and this one here, obviously I started, so what I'll show you what, I, what I've what i done, but on a, even a smaller one. So we'll put this off to the side for a minute. And I'll work on that a little bit, but this is what I'll be working on, this little scrap piece right here to help us um, get from the beginning, you know, of what I did, the black. And actually there's a little sepia brown in there. So I've got, I've got touching up to do on this and so I'll show you how I go about it, and we'll let this uh, be our reference picture right here. I also have a reference picture of a super zoom in, where you could see a lot of detail and stars and all kinds of texture, soft texture, but it's a lot of it. So anyway, um, let me get going with the background. I'll be using this HP Plus Awada HPSB plus for my background and for that from there I'll be using the micron for some of the the white areas that are the space gases and things like that okay so let's get that started so I have a little bit of color here on the side and putting it into the side cup it's just black right out of the bottle I'm not going to worry about the brown or colored that were that I saw here, the sepia. It, it, it doesn't matter for this demo, okay? So let's just get this, test this on the side. Okay, so just from a distance, especially for any beginner, it's air on and then back and forth. While the air's on, I'm not going to do it with the paint in. So it's just a back and forth motion. Most of it's done probably in the halfway point up forward. So if you're starting to make fine lines or dots, obviously you're gonna be just pulling that trigger back just a smidge, all right? So, but for the background, you wanna pull the gun away. So it's distance too. So let's just dust it on. I'm gonna put a little bit of tape behind this um, movement here. So let me just stop it from moving around. This is clay board, forgot to mention that. All right, so that's that. Probably a piece here. Just to keep it, I'm just protecting the poster board background just to keep it cleaner. I know this board isn't cut correctly. I could file that later. So if this comes out nice for a little demo, I could just file the edges. I'm just grabbing it. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong gun. That was the Micron. Um, here we go. Start anywhere, really. You know, got to get that tip dry. You can rock the needle a little bit and pick it off. And I'll be spraying around 20 pounds. I don't have, I have my Mac valve, so I don't know exactly what. I just, it's a feel for me, like, it might be a little bit too much, so I'm gonna back it down until it's just, going a wrong way with this dial. Okay, all right, here we go. If it's too um, blotchy, I can just give a little more air, or I can dilute it more. I'm gonna look at the first coat here. I'm painting the whole thing black. It's just like pass one, pass two, you know, your, your top piece there, go like that, and you overlap. It's 
you don't have any rows. As I always used to say to my students when I had my building, my school, just think of uh, not creating rows like when you're cutting a lawn, you would overlap, right? So I'm already out of black. So I just, I have a solo cup here. It's just black right out of the bottle, but it's reduced with just a few drops of water. Tip dry again. It's gonna be a, a rather short video. I can always come back and do more. And let me just lift this up a little bit. So you don't wanna flood it on, because if you flood it on, you'll get all kinds of uh, mess. You get a mess on there. So let's, so we got like a ghostly, actually we'll go right about there. That's where it was. Maybe a little bit out further. Zoom's a little sensitive on the phone. That's good. Okay, so. Now I can start putting in a darker pass of color. Black and white, <laughs> black. Wow, it's really, this gun has a wider nozzle um, as opposed to my mic gun. And it's pretty close. I mean, it's a, fly, it's a flying airbrush as far as details, but it does spray out a pretty good amount. So I didn't, I didn't even uh, mix up enough in here for it. So I'll just do the same thing. All I did was just except this time I was pretty thick coming out of the bottle. So that's all I did it was just so many drops. After you do it for a while, it becomes like a, a, you know, a little dash of this, a little dash of that, like a recipe. It's not counting the drops. It's just checking the, you know, the paint and how it's looking when it's coming out. The reduced, the reduced paint. And in this case, I think I might put a little bit of 4012 reducer in there, just a drop or two, just to cut it a little bit better. All right, that's the Createx. I wrote it on there because it wore off 4012. That's what I have in stock. Just a little, I'll probably let three drops hit it just to break it up a little more, reduce it. And now, we will continue. Space Galaxy is really, how to paint a space galaxy is kind of the title of the video. So you can see each pass getting darker and darker. As I come up to the top, I'm gonna just leave the air on, turn the air up a little bit, air dry it. Okay. I'm going to get pretty dark here. Tip dry. Now I can get a little heavier because it's working. It's just looks a little ghostly on the angle. But in reality, from what I'm seeing, it's not looking like in the cell phone. So let's just keep going. So I'm just rocking my hand back again for the beginners. Air on always. I'm not flooding it on, but I definitely am putting it on heavier now. Because when you first put the black on, it's very ghost, ghostly looking. Okay, so again, just air. I'd even use the hair dryer if I, you know, this is pretty much dry to the touch. You're getting pretty black, right? OK, 
Okay, whenever you spray in heavier, let's move this. Let me turn the lighting uh, away from that a little bit. I'm going to turn the light off for a minute, just for a minute. Oh, that's the other light hitting it. Okay. It doesn't look like that in reality, but anyway, let's get this free from there and check it out up close. It's got some texture in the board. Again, this is a sample piece. I haven't seen that actually on my other, like this one. I didn't really see that on any of my boards, so I don't know what that's all about. You can lightly sand it with a thousand sandpaper and you can get yourself a really nice smooth, you know, smooth surface again. Sometimes, who knows with a scrap piece why that's like that, but I'm just gonna do it again. And again, we're out. It's just squirting it into the Solo Cup, which is a restaurant. You know, you use it for cocktail sauce and what have you. I buy them over at the restaurant supply house and it serves me well. They come with lids if you want the lids. They snap on and then you can save your paint. You can write on it. That says, believe it or not, tannish brown. And it's still good from maybe a week or better. You got to help it along. It does lose its... You might have to remix it a little bit, but it's paint. It's in there. Okay, so we're getting a good coverage on there now. One more pass. Okay. From the top, down. I'll move this over this way more so you can watch my finger on, oops, on the, um, I really don't have to protect this. I'm just being a little extra, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, what I'm doing, watch, watch my finger move the real paintings over. Okay, so what I'm doing is the air's on and I'm just pulling back on the trigger like that as I add that paint. So there's just about no paint in there. So now I can go and show you what I'm doing because there's no paint. I'm going like pass one, pass two. See, the air's on the whole time. Pass three, paint on, paint off. Paint on, paint off. That's the basics of practicing your drills and then try to do dagger strokes and feather strokes and everything else that would be another video, but I'm sure, you know, a dot, and then there's a line, and there's a dagger stroke. Feather stroke would be softer. Dagger stroke would be like sharper. You know, they're even sharper than that. This is kind of, t-shirt paint does it better, but those are your dagger strokes, and they can be very tight when you are painting, um, you know, t-shirts and whatever. Well, you need you need a lot of feather stroke control, which is a dagger stroke on a softer level. You know, it's further away, and that's used for everything, you know. So we just go right there. Obviously, my protecting the background was <laughs> not necessary because it didn't work. This is the part that gets a little fun, okay? So um, there's stages. You work from the back to the front. You can, you know, you put your white on and then you can start tinting different things, which I'll demo right now. So I'm not going to copy this one exact, but just so you can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit. Okay, so we keep that off to the side. Um, wait, I can let you see it. If I move this over a little bit this way, I can let you see that a little bit. I don't want to paint on it, but okay. So we'll pin that down over here and that should be good. All right. A little reflection of the light. Okay. So we take the white. Now I got the micron now. 
Custom Micron SB, CMSB. Okay, it's the old school because uh, <laughs> uh, they have the Takumi now by uh, replacing this one with the color cup that starts higher up. It does. It's lined up like a gravity feed almost. I would love to get the cup at least for this one. And then from there, it's a shorter, there's a shorter front end. I'm talking about the new airbrush. And then, um, yeah, you got two versions, two sizes, but this doesn't go way down here. So you're actually getting that paint into the gun quicker with that new, new version. But anyway, I've got my white mixed. Nothing wrong with this gun, but I sure wouldn't mind trying the, you know, to get any kind of uh, quicker response is great. Right? All right, so now, again, this is the Mac valve, which is just simply air at the control at the thing. So I'm going to just mimic this area a little bit, okay? The, the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the middle here, and I'm just going to pretend everything's going to be painted later. So right now... And I'm not worried there, there, there's a color shift of blue in this white, but it's, it's irrelevant right now because it's, it could be adjusted with the opposite color, but I'm not worried about a little blue shift for a space scene. All right, so out here it starts getting softer, so you might just pull the gun away more and you just kind of fog it in, come back to the darker area like that. This will actually be the orangey color right here. So we'll just work this down here. So where the real brightness is, you could take it down because it's going to be yellow at the bottom. You can aim up. You can make little shapes because it does have shapes, but it can also go back in with the uh, with the airbrush and, and the other color rather. And I could create down further away. I could create that the little shapes. You can also use stencils and texture stencils and things like that. But right now, I'm just freehanding it. Kind of rounds off right here. And I can kind of just find my way right here, a little brighter, connecting those two. You know, it's soft. It's more solid there. Then it kind of fades out. It gets softer, and it just kind of does something like this further away. Just kind of let it go like that. Maybe a baby one out here. Whoops. Get you to see that one. Yeah, right out here, there's just a little, it's not real bright, so I'm just going to kind of, it's going to almost wiggle the gun, you know. Then you have like the batting that you can spray through. Sometimes I would get another person to help me, you know, open this up. So let's do it right down here. And I don't know how successful I'm going to be with one hand. Let me just see if I can stretch this out. This is batting. It's very, it's not like cotton. If you pulled on the cotton, that would just tear apart and wouldn't help you at all. So... Down below it is a little bit of texture area, so you can just kind of spray through that a little bit to see what we get. Okay, good. So if you look, you can see little, uh, zoom in on it. Whoops, right there. You can see little texture marks. Again, if this was pulled tighter, so let's take a piece of tape. Let's just do this other area. So I'm going to stretch this out, find a new area that's stronger. And I'm just going to attach it on one side with tape acting like another person's pulling it across for me. That's what you want. You want to stretch it and open it up and then you want to spray through it. So it's billowing down here a little bit so you can get some something to happen. Yeah, that's very, uh, and you can work off of that. You can, you can start to go in and create other effects that you could find in there. Now, if somebody was holding this, I could even get that to be more dynamic looking. Um, but it all works in the end because in reality, even this area up here, that's this beautiful blue, 
is, this is here, right? There it is, more or less. Tails off a little bit, let's do that. Well, it really is tailing off with the fog, the foggy spray. It's above it, see, like that. This kind of ends pretty solid, and the bright spots are right there, and right in this area, extra bright. They are dry, it'll all start going, but it's more solid now in this area, brighter. Okay, as far as in here, it's going to have, again, to see the other colors, you have to, I'll do this right here, right here. These are kind of meeting up. Okay, and now we have an opening area in between. And then we have, I'm gonna play off of some of these shapes here. Whoops, I got a little trailing going on. Okay, so I gotta pull this off. Again, for the beginners, trailing is when paint's coming out, when it's only supposed to be air, All right? I get a lot of comments, uh, probably more on Facebook Live, uh, people asking questions like, you, you, you got a lot of people that are already up and running and they're good. And then all of a sudden you got the beginner, beginner. And they're like, they want to know, you know, hey, how do you do that? You know, and the other guys know, you know, because they've been doing it forever. And it becomes something you can do in your sleep. I mean, it's really, so I'm just playing off some of those billowing little shapes. Far away, you get foggier. And it creates a nice looking, uh, just cloud formation in the sky. And this one, I'm just gonna kind of do some pump strokes. That's where you're going like this with the arrow. But a little further away. Right there, we've got this one that's already formed. So I'm just, it's kind of like a map, you know. I, some of it could you, you could use actually right from the get-go because but as I was talking, I was mentioning the tip drive, which it seems to be a little bit better. But I, I just pulled that out, which I already did, I guess, without thinking. You can kind of, and then just reseat the needle. Oops. Yep. Push it through. Make sure it's reseated. Let's see, I'm a little brighter right here. It's just, get, just space, uh, picture that all in color. You're gonna use the transparency to tint it. You go along the edge and create that billowing shape. And this one. You can draw in, you can map it out and, you know, take a, there's different trace down papers that are graphite. Some are lighter, get the lighter one and you can give yourself a guide of where this is, what angle it's on just to help you. But right now it's just a little freehand show here that can get the job done and just kind of like looking at the reference and that's it. And then just freehand. This is a little harder edge here, because I'm seeing it in the reference picture. Go in close, come out, and then just second coat it. Okay, it looks, you can see the brightness of it. You can already see it appearing. And then there's gases down here that, like I said, this is a smaller piece. So my painting has much more Beyond this, this is like that cluster. This painting has an you know, area right in here. I'll just lighten it up a little bit. It goes down. There's a little feather stroke there. And that's what it does in the picture. And then it changes colors. It goes into all kinds of pretty little violet. Where is it? Um, let me look. Right here. Okay, it has a, the blue on it. Then there's the violets and all these nice colors. So I'm just a little bit more right here. I'm gonna connect it with some shapes down far away. 
these, these are fun and you know, you can sell these things. You, my reference was from a free website because um, I can't you know, go up in space and take these pictures. And it's, you know, the, the free websites like Unsplash and things, you um, copyright free images if you want to have help or just want to make your own stuff up, you can. But you can sell those stuff in little paintings and, you know, move on, get some money for it and have some fun painting it. They're, they're kind of quick. All right, so we'll leave that. And a little bit out here, like I said, it's a smaller painting. So that's it. That's it. Now we're going to have fun with a little bit of color. So let me get the white out. Okay. So this is the a water cleaning station. Helps your lungs because it keeps all the overspray in the jar. I know I got a very short distance between the camera and here. And then I'm only going to like say I'll do a little blue or I'll do yellow first uh, because going from light the next color, the next lighter color and you know, white and yellow. So the, it's easy with the airbrush to go through the transition too. As you get into all this, I'll show you the zoom again. So the white's already there. So now if I get yellow, and that yellow is not right out of the bottle. So what I'm gonna do is just mix up a little yellow. I might even have some from last week. And maybe, I gotta see what happens when I put some water in it. Looks like it's there. Maybe, maybe not. But the thing is the mixture's there. So I put water in there. Now I'll just add some more white. Just add some white, giving it some body back, but it's too white now. So I'll just add the yellow and uh, a smidge of the opposite. And if anybody knows any color theory, Figure out the opposite of yellow, that's way too bright. And go on a, go online and study color theory. And uh, put the opposite of each color and into each color and you can get yourself um, very nice gray down colors that are more realistic. Not to mention, you gotta be careful because in this case, the darkest color on the color wheel is the answer, violet. But I cannot put a drop of violet in there. I'll have a brown. So I'm just going to take a paintbrush and gray it down a little bit like that. It takes It takes it to a more gray or yellow. That should be good for now. Okay, here we go. So I'm putting a little bit in there. Turn my hair down. Now this is not transparent. This, this is actually going to be treated by being sprayed light. So I'm gonna outline this white. Whoops, I gotta get the color to come out first. Okay, here we go. So somewhere around these white bright spots is gonna be this. So we'll go around it right here. And I can go back in with the white too. I'll go down here. Fog this in yellowish, just a little bit. And over here. The nice thing about this is there's green there. So when the blue comes in, it's gonna make a green right on the, right on the board. Okay, so where is this one? It is right here. In this area. Hair dry. Kind of melts it back in. So I'm losing my brightest spot, but that's okay because I have to uh, put the yellow in, right? And right in the middle, I'm just gonna brighten that up. So I've lost my highlight, but that's all right. Uh, it's nowhere else. It's a little bit out here, foggy, right in there. All right, so that's it. Um, the next color is going to be 
probably cerulean blue. I gotta look at the color with white in it. Well, I'll make my mind up as I spray it and put the air pressure up to get this other color out quicker. Okay. So let's see what we got over here. Anything special? Yeah, we got a little mixture here. And it's it dried up. I think I can use it if I put a drop of white or two in it. It's pretty much, it was pretty much gone almost, but I'm going to spray this just like a transparent. I'm going to spray it very lightly and just put a little washed out blue right in here. If you look at this picture right here, it's a very light blue. And I'm just gonna go right into this area. And you'll get the green right there. And then you'll get the blue right there. There's the green, I don't know if you can see that. It's very subtle. Right there. And where else do we want this? Oh, maybe down here a little bit. Okay. Now I can probably, maybe, maybe out here a little. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to the darker blue, which should be cobalt, cobalt blue, and I don't remember from last week or whenever it was. It might have been two weeks ago this paint's been, I think last week I didn't, I didn't go on. I wasn't, I wasn't um, able to go on because I wasn't organized for, a new painting. Okay, so now you got the other blue and it's gonna come up on the black. It won't hurt the black, it, but you'll start seeing the second blue right there. And this is kind of blue, so the white turns blue, right? You wouldn't see that blue if you didn't have the white to help you. And down here, And a little light ghostly there. That's another color, and maybe a little bit over here. And then a little darker at the top, right in here. Okay, so now we've got different, dry that, different areas that are, you know, all being colored in as far as texture and cutting in. So let's go to the black. Hopefully, we got this. All right, so we're gonna get back into here in between the two shapes and start to find some of the, keeping it very like light, hardly spraying it. Cut in here a little bit and just aim it right on out separate that and this out so you can reshape things this is more blue in there so i can do that too but this is good for now all right so you can see how you can get that and what else do we want to do um go back to that white It's very simple. A lot of it is, you know, repeating. It's like what you saw here can bring you to the next step, which is more, a little more done on that one. There's stars and different things. So just for the sake of argument, I do have a little color that I missed on just to give us some of that 
color here that will make for interesting contrast, but it's not probably the exact color. So I'll just tint that real light. It's, it's an opaque mixture, I do believe. Oh, we're getting stars. That's because my air pressure's too low. I'm just gonna tint that a little bit. And go in and you can fire in some areas that are stronger. And I'm just gonna kind of spray that from a distance and bring some of that over that way a little more. That should be good for there. This one has this color on it, sorta. And so did the end of this one. So we got that. Whoops, sorry guys. Give me that. That's the setup. Now, I got a very dirty airbrush. Like I said, I'm not trying to copy this one as my other one is closer to it. I'm just trying to show you how I got to that point. It was from a Facebook Live, which I was going to do a YouTube Live, but I, I had all kinds of stuff go on last week and didn't get to it. Okay, so I'm blowing out that color. And now I'm going to go to the white again. I'm not going to make this a real long video. I'm going to probably shorten it with a little bit of highlights in here and then some stars. Some of the airbrushes can spray while you take off the nozzle. I think, uh, I'm not sure of the model anymore, but they can actually spray speckle, spatter, um, by taking the nozzle off. This one, I don't think does that. Okay, I'm gonna put a little cleaner to the gun. 4012 reducer. And now the white. Okay. So I'm gonna just, just try to find the bright spots again, which are right. I can't leave the picture obviously on front of it, in front of it. But right there, there's three spots. So I'll just go in and re-find them. Whoops, air, air can send them flying. Right around here, and it's white, so I'm just gonna put it in, and then there's one right under there. Whoops, a little too low. So in there and right up in here. Haze it out a little bit. Some more yellow is going to go in there in the middle. This one goes this way a little bit more. And then there's one more guy over here somewhere. Okay, dry it. Okay, so the bright spots are back. And then the yellow can go around it again. Back and forth a little bit, you know, with these colors. Get rid of the white. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to a little yellow right out of the bottle. It's gonna be very bright. But I'm gonna try to, try to control it by just spraying it very carefully. Okay, I'm gonna kick this up a notch now. Spray it on the base that's there. Uh, here we go. There's pretty colors there. That's transparent, so that's gonna really get too uh, green on me, but for outer space, it's cool. Now I'm gonna go back to the mixed yellow. Maybe I should have done it in reverse, but Actually, I should have because there wasn't enough of the original yellow there that I could put the transparent on top of. It's so tiny that it starts getting lost. So just going to air on, get this going in here. Check it on the side.
it's opaque. If I spray it heavy, I can get coverage right there. And then down here a little bit under this, this one. Again, the white will have to be put back in because I'm kind of, it's so small, I'm kind of losing that bottom white one. And then just that green area, just spray the yellow right on it and blue will hit it again. Yeah, so it's back and forth. I lost my white again. All right. Um, I'm not seeing that anywhere else. Just a nice little, there's browns in there. There's all kinds of stuff. I'm talking about around this color. There's all kinds of like tans and right in here. time with the white and then a couple of stars and I think at that point we'll be good for a demo okay so we've got um, what do I need the white Soften that a little bit with the white. Yeah. And what else? I think a little more white up here, which kind of goes blue on its own. And a little more white over here. Again, this changes into another color, but it's a smaller version of the big one, so. Yeah, so there's less black. Taking the blue. Okay, right into the black, doesn't matter. This a little more blue. Aim down. Keep that green. That yellow from getting too green. <laughs> Got them just far away. Getting these. They'll get hit again with these. We'll get hit again with white. Out here, and that, and that's it. Maybe a little more strength right there. That's it. Okay. So that's kind of like the setup. Then there's a lot more to do to get further than that, obviously. But all right. So I'm not liking the opaque in this area. I, I mean, I can go in there. So that tinting color, I'm going to paint that white again. But the tinting color should be transparent so that it will, you know, not make big solid blotches like that. So right now, I just take a toothbrush like that. I take a little palette like this one. You could do blue stars and white stars and all kinds of, you know, color stars that set themselves 
back further than some. You know, it's just a matter of taking this and so I'm just kind of pushing further away, get some bigger ones down here. There's not a lot. This area has a lot right in there. I'm going to try to run it. If there's too many up there, you just can spray the black out. Uh, they're on top. They're, they're, that makes everything start to set itself back a little bit. Maybe a little drop of water in my palette to get bigger, bigger ones. few here and like I said the ones I don't want I can just get rid of them because you can put strategic ones in take a toothpick usually your first drop on the toothpick is too big so you might want to touch it one time to a side piece and then pick strategic area whoops that one kind of put a hole in itself let me just touch that one again like that each one will get a little, press them very light. They'll get a, you can put them in exactly where you want them then. Go back over that one. Uh, almost. <laughs> that, that. These are like in a row, you know. So now you're making specific choices of putting them in on purpose in a spot you want them. Right in here. So you can kind of see where it's going. Um, I'll do this one bigger. And that's too big. But I won't tell nobody. Okay. Big one out here. And a little smaller one. Just a little smaller than that one. And there's a few over here that are dancing around. Just one, two, three. And then you can see that you've got um, control of putting in certain stars that are not, again, touch it once to the surface and then you could kind of, that if you do it too much, then you won't have any paint. So that didn't work out. Press real light and go for some baby ones, clusters, crash into each, each other. I think there's one like that right here. That looks like it's you know, not sprayed, but just some kind of cluster of stars in a small area. Where else? Looking at the photograph. Oops. I'll just put two more in, one here and one there. So you can kind of see, and you can do one other thing if I have white in here. No, nope, I, got, I got the other. So let's get rid of some, or make some more knock back. There's blue now, they're turning blue. And then I can go to black. drop out of there and you could just keep going with colors this will be like more of a brown uh, 
brownish colors, oranges, there's browns in there. And they're muted too, they're not, you know, solid. So for the last part, I will just take some black and put it into uh, covering some of the stars. Boy, it's making speckles in that color cup. So that 40 tw uh, 12 reducer is breaking up that paint bed. Been using mortar most of the time. Okay. So the palettes, you know, just one of these little palettes. I didn't even show you that already. Just spray over the clouds you don't want. There's some space gases up there. You can bring more black in. It's pretty void out here of anything exciting going on. You can just cut in there. They're a little darker out here. Fog it. Shape it. You have to hang in there as you watch it as it comes together because it can look really chopped up in the beginning. I'm, I'm kind of shaping it. I can still see difference differences going on down here. We get some more sky, uh, black space color here in this corner. And a little bit like gray tones in here. Nothing, not as black as down there. I'll just bring that over. And I gotta be careful. This gets all the little shapes that would be like this stuff. You have to just spray them in. Whoops, that's the light, sorry guys. Right here, that's all the little shapes of the outer colors. This is black, so I don't really wanna do that there. But, um, and this is blue cutting in there. So I back and forth with more white and keep it going and get all kinds of interesting things going on. Just shape this a little bit more. Just go in here a little bit with the black. Just probably have to tone it down later. Just to show you how to shape a little more like that. But it's the wrong color. It should be the blue. So that's it for now. You can see how I knocked away stars I didn't want. And here too, I don't want them right in there. Because you're splattering them with a toothbrush so they go all over the place. But then you could come back in again with the toothpick and you could put in a couple that would really be nice, like just right there, right there. And maybe a couple more in the cloud, in there. Whoop. Paint is kind of running a little bit there. And get more bright over there. So you can see where it's going. And then there's a, there's stuff going on down in here. There's a lot of little speckles down in, in this area that are in the frosty blue area. And maybe one more. Oops, too big. One more right there. That's still kind of big, but I'm trying to get this where you guys can see something happening. Go back over that one because it kind of got lost. And yeah, there'll be some stars in here. They'll actually change colors. So you can see that now. All right, so that's it from a distance. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. There's the two paintings side by side. That's how I went about doing this. This one will be worked on and worked on until, until I get it. Okay, but yeah, I got to get that yellow to go from the greenish because the blues are hitting it in different shifts. But hopefully that will help you in, you know, doing some kind of galaxy of sorts that this is very, this was heavy speckled because it was in the photograph. And then you could see all in here. That's working on it later, you know what I mean? Doing this right now is like not... <laughs> going to show you every little thing. You have to work it. Even down in here, there's like the orange sunset, but there's like brown cut-throughs and breakups of different things. There's some grays. There's some blues. 
I got to brighten that blue up a little more to make it more vibrant. And then the trees were put in on top of the sun. So this is a photograph of a time lapse of, you know, catching the sunset and then the galaxy. So anyway, there's my, that's what I got. And thanks for checking out the video. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care. God bless you guys.